Have y'all tried paint pouring? Super fun. Downright addictive. Seriously messy. Now, I am known for my messy ways, but when it came to wanting to add paint pour onto furniture, I've seen it done, I've seen it done well, but I thought, hmm, let me see if I can figure out another approach to this look that maybe isn't quite so messy. <laughs> so since I do a lot of work with decoupage and I do a lot of work with fabric, my brain started doing what it does. <laughs> what if, what if, what if, what if I found fabric of a paint pour? First, I was thinking I have to do a paint pour and then put it on fabric. Now, we are gonna get to that. But what I did instead was just Google it. I just Googled it. And I went to my favorite place to get fabric, spoonflower.com. Don't worry, all of this is gonna be listed here below for you, spoonflower.com. And I just typed in paint pour. This is what happened. Is that cool or what? And everybody thought I paint poured it. <laughs> so anyway, the bug bit. And I'm thinking, fabric, that's the way to go. So we're gonna go step by step why I chose it, how we're gonna do it, and then we're gonna put this whole thing together for you with this new piece, all right? Are you guys ready to get started? Are you ready? Let's go. First, you gotta pick your piece. Now here's what I suggest. Get something with nice, smooth, flat surface. It can have a slight curve, but don't get something crazy with a lot of molding that you're gonna to have to cut in and fix. I did that, all right, I already did that for you. I already learned the hard way for you. So I took care of that, you can check that off your list. So now, just go with something simple. So let me show you the piece that I've chosen and why and how I'm gonna even make it simpler than it already was, okay? So, we go here, can you guys see this? Smooth and easy, lots of wide open spaces for the fabric to hit. But here's what I didn't think about when I chose this piece. It's got little pieces of molding here. You know what I'm gonna do? Do you know the first thing I'm gonna do? Take it off. <laughs> I gotta take it off. I gotta take it off. It's just, I can't, I can't cut into all those little pieces um, and it'll still be beautiful, but I gotta take it off. So I'm gonna pop these off. And I've already primed the piece. As you can see, I actually started painting the piece, but then I decided that I had a much better idea. So first things first, get it, make sure. And here's something I wanna to talk to you about. I sell a lot of pieces in my shop. I consign a lot of pieces in my shop for other people. And here's what I see happen too many times, and this is what I want you guys to be careful with. If you're going to work really hard on a piece and you're going to turn it into a piece of art and you're going to pour your heart and soul into it, make sure it's a good piece of furniture. Okay. Make sure the drawers slide, make sure that it's solid wood, make sure that the legs don't wobble. I've had so many pieces come into my shop that someone really loved, but I can't sell them because they look good, but they're not going to sell and you're not going to use them in your house because you put all that energy into a piece that wasn't good to start with. All right. So I've already made sure all these drawers work really well. It's a solid piece of furniture. She's got dovetail joints. She is awesome. She is worth my time. Make sure she's worth your time. That's what I want to tell you. So we've got our piece. We went online and we ordered some fabric. Now, you can go on spoonflower.com and just order anything you'd like. I would suggest a couple of yards, measure your piece, but get a little extra. This is why the pattern will repeat itself and where it repeats and doesn't repeat may have a bearing on how your piece looks in the end. So get a little bit more than you need, especially if you're going for a big, bold, repeating pattern. Because I went for a big, bold, repeating pattern and I wanted to make sure that it was gonna work. So we order it and then we wait patiently by the mailbox for about a week and a half and then it gets here. And then we rip it open and we're so excited. Do you guys wanna see what I picked? I didn't go for paint pour, not this time. I didn't even go for alcohol ink this time. I went for agate, that's right, because it has the colors of the sea and blues and greens and summer is here and let's celebrate. How 
how gorgeous is this? All these colors. It has all the colors. It has all the colors of summer and earth and sky. So now what we get to decide is how are we going to put this on this? Because it's a big, bold, repeating pattern. Which way are we going to do it? So the obvious way would be to hold it up, kind of just lay it on here, and I'm going to go with center. This is why I told you to order extra, because if you think you need a, a yard, order two. If you think you need two, order three, because you need to have some that hangs off the side. Measure your piece. Make sure the width is going to work for you. And here we go. So here's the thing. This is gorgeous. It truly is, but it's featuring the orange tones, the earth tones, which if it were fall, I would probably do. But I really want to see more of the blues and the greens in this piece. So bear with me. What if we went the other way? Would we have enough? I'm gonna pull this out a little bit. Okay, now. This way we get more of the blues and the greens coming through. This is where you have to like stand back. Let's look at this. So wouldn't be quite centered, except, oh, hold on, I'm thinking. We do have it repeating over here. So what I'm saying is we could match this up to the top of this, all right? So here's what I'm thinking. If you follow me, if you are on my page, if you are in my group, you know that every time you come to me and you say, uh, what's wrong? I will say the same thing. You don't even need me anymore. If just write it down. You didn't go far enough. You didn't put in as many layers. That was your base coat. You didn't go further. Okay. So you've got to risk completely screwing up your piece before you can make it exceptional. And guess what happens when you do that? Sometimes you completely screw up your piece. <laughs> That's true, but you learn something in the process. But if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, because you're scared to say, what if I turn the fabric a different way and cut it into pieces and then made it work? You're always gonna just do the same old, same old, and your piece is gonna look like everybody else's. Don't do that, it's boring. Now we need to decide is how and where we want the overlap. This was under. See? There we go. Y'all didn't believe me, did you? You were like, what is she doing? <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna play around because now I wanna see how I want this to work. I don't want the split to work in the middle of a, um, in the middle of a drawer, okay? I want the split to happen between the drawers so you, you'll never know this happened. So here's what I'll do. I have this end at this drawer right here. How does that look? We don't have a whole lot hanging over the edge, so I'm not going to worry about that. But if you do have a piece, now's your time to cut off the edge. Don't cut it perfectly. Leave yourself a couple inches on each side for stretching and covering because you never know. We're just kind of, we're like, we're like whittling it down. So we just want a piece that's easy to work with at this point. That's not your whole piece. If you have a small repeating pattern, just cut with about three inches on all sides so that we can lift it up um, and not have to worry about getting precise just yet because we're going to cut off the extra when we're all done. Okay. We're not going to do it now. And I'm going to go straight across again. I'm using kind of navigation lines. I'm picking something in my pattern that I'm aiming for so that I don't go too far awry. All right. Those of you who are more versed in fabrics and such will probably have an easier time of cutting a straight line. 
those of us crazy creatives never get it straight the first time. All right, so I've got this, and now I have all this to make a pillow or something or sash. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna re-tape this up here. Just hold it in place. So whether you have cut this with one piece or two, we've cut around the edges and we have something a little easier to work with. And we're gonna work with some navigation points to make sure everything matches up. So now it's time to take this off and we're gonna put the adhesive on the drawers. I've tried taking all the drawers out, lining them up, spraying the adhesive, and then putting the fabric on. I did not find that the easiest way to do it, however. You do avoid these lines in the middle that can sometimes throw you, but in general, the drawers kept tipping over, and even though I got it technically accurate, when I put the drawers in, it didn't look right. That's what I was talking about before. Sometimes your dresser's a little off, or the measurements are a little off, and getting it perfect on the floor and then putting it into the dresser, it was kind of like, eh. Right, so you wanna make sure that whatever you do, you're looking at the big picture as you do it. Even if it means that you're off a skosh or you need to kind of tilt it a tiny bit, you want it to look right on your piece, not right on the floor. So I've learned to just do this next step with the drawers in place. But I do wanna put the adhesive only on the drawers. So I could take all the drawers out, put the adhesive on, put them all back, be covered in adhesive glue, or here's what I do. Just don't hurt yourself. Right, get all the drawers out, pull them out, spray the adhesive, and then push the drawers back in. There you go. All right, let me go find the adhesive. So I went and bought the adhesive that I like to use for this project, and then I left it in the other car. I'm not driving home. So I, um, I'm going to use photo mount because that works too. Basically at this point, you just wanna use something that has a light tack. It's not permanent, we're just holding it in place and smoothing it out. That's all we need this step to do. So photo mount actually will work just fine. Um, I use, uh, go to the glue section at Home Depot, Lowe's, or Ace Hardware, go to the glue section, or the paint section, and then go to the glue section, then go to spray glue, um, and find something there that's medium tack. That's all you need to do. Okay, so I'm gonna spray this. In a perfect world, I would do this with the windows and doors open or even outside, because this gets really smelly. Um, but it is blazing hot outside and I'm not letting that heat in. So there you go. I'm just gonna spray this on here. And sweeping motions. And you just wanna wait. It'll be kind of runny at first. Just wait like a couple minutes and it'll start to, to get the stickiness. Um, don't wait too long. I mean, don't go to lunch again. Don't, don't go run your kids to school. It'll, it won't be sticky enough. Picking up a love, friends fill up the car to lip bands because we wanna, we wanna, yeah, we just wanna have fun. If you've ever stenciled, you know about registration marks, okay? Big stencils. So they're the little dots in your stencil that tell you where to repeat your pattern so that your pattern lines up. And there's always gonna be a vertical one and a horizontal one, okay? That makes sure that when you go your whole wall, it doesn't go like this. So in essence, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna use things here as our navigation marks or our registration marks, okay? So I know I want, so I'm gonna push these two in for a second because this is where the most important piece of my element is. It's right here right here, this green piece. So, so this is center and this is center and this is the center of my design. And I know I want it to overlap right here in the green. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna pull my green to be pretty much right there at that point. Because once you get that first step, the rest will follow. All right, so now I've got that. And what I want to do is pull this taut, make sure it's lying flat. This is tricky. There's no rushing this. This is the hardest part, but this is the part that's going to make it awesome. 
So I'm gonna push here and I'm gonna push my finger up so this line is center, okay? Then I'm gonna smooth out, I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna push out along the side. And I'm gonna let the fabric just go where the fabric goes. I'm gonna take this, okay? And it may not be right the first time, it probably won't be, but that's why we're using this stuff. So we can lie it down. So here's the thing about this technique. It's fabric. And that can be really awesome in that it moves around with you, but it can also be a pain in the bazinkas because it stretches and we're going over a curve, right? So we may not, it may not lay exactly the way it's supposed to the first time, but you wanna, so you're kind of splitting the difference here because you are going on a curve and it can be tricky. You just kind of got to play with it and eyeball it to get it right. Okay. That's feeling pretty good right there. And that's why we use the sticky spray. So we can lift it up and put it down and lift it up and put it down and rearrange it. And I know this can be hard. So the first time you might do this, maybe you're not going to choose something as intricate as, as a one big, huge repeating pattern, right? Or maybe you are. It just depends. I wanted to show you how to do it the hard way. So you'll definitely know how to do it the easy way. All right. So we've got that on there. Right. And then I'm going to push this drawer in, push all these in, and I'm going to start lying it down. Push it, push it up, push it, push it real good. Okay. Because if we were doing this with Mod Podge, oh, for goodness sakes, it would just be sliding all over the place. And we'd have, our fingers would be totally sticky. Oh yes, we are looking good, people. It's really smooth. It's super smooth and it's stuck on there. Okay. Now that we have this on here, we know it's center, we check that. It's smooth, we check that. We eyeballed it, we check that. I always recommend you double check your eyeballs. And this is why. It could look right and the whole thing is tilted. All right, just double check and this is where we go back to our little registration mark idea. So if this is hitting here, and I go to the end, this is the end, and it's right here where this little blue hook is, is that where it's hitting here? Yes, it is. Yes. Victory! All right, let's go to the bottom. It's hitting kind of right where this little star starts. It's ending right kind of in the middle of the star. Am I going to pull the whole thing off because it's off by an eighth of an inch? No, but I'm going to keep track and make sure that doesn't spread. Because like I said, this drawer may be a little shorter on this side, right? So we want to kind of compare and contrast points to make it match. Okay, so now that I have it lined up with my mark, okay, a little mark right there, and I know that that's my center. I have my center here. Just very, very gently, you're just pushing it out to the sides. Even if it's not right, even if you feel like, oh, I think I'm a little off, just push it out and we'll micro fix it. Push it off. Smooth out the wrinkles. And I'm going from the center. That's why we go from the center so it'll even itself out along the sides. That's, you can see that that's matching up with that. That's the most important thing because I'm using two pieces of fabric. So I need to make sure that they're all lined up. I have some wrinkles, that's okay. Now that I have the security of knowing I'm pretty much in the right place, I can just pull it off and let it fall and use my whole hand to spread it back out again. Okay, when you're working with fabric, it can 
stretch, so you don't want that. But what's great is that even if you get a wrinkle, you're not gonna ruin your fabric and you can start over because it's not paper. It's not wet, we're just getting it stuck on and we're pushing it out. We've got it on and it took a few attempts and that's okay, don't get frustrated. It will be worth it and it's so much fun and you'll get the hang of it. Um, start with a simple pattern maybe, but I wanted to show you everything it takes to do a big pattern or a little pattern, okay? But here's what I want you to do next. Walk away, stand far away and look at it because you've been micro fixing and checking that this matches that and that matches this and this is centered, but now you gotta make sure it looks right. We know it's correct, but does it look good? So go, walk back there and then stare at it and make sure that it's basically what you envision. I just did that and I realized I didn't like it. So I shifted a little bit down here. Okay, so pull away from it so that you can really get a sense of if it's working for you. Now I'm feeling pretty good about this and now we're ready for the next step. And it's gonna be so much easier from here on out, okay? We're on the, we're on the downhill slope, all right? We're cruising. The next thing we're gonna do is grab some Mod Podge. <laughs> It's not Mod Podge. I love you all, but it's Mod Podge. Okay, just a little pet peeve. Okay, so why does it matter? It's just, it's glue, okay? Grab your glue. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint it on right on top of the fabric, right on top. So I'm not gonna paint where these little dividers are between my drawers, because I don't need those to stick. But I'm gonna make sure I go here on all of my drawers and then I'm gonna let that dry. Ready? Let's go. So this is the coat that's gonna get it to really stick forever and ever. So we've got the coat of tacky spray that allows it to stick long enough for us to put it together. This is the coat that's gonna make it last forever and ever. And then we're gonna put another coat on that of polyurethane that's gonna um, protect it forever and ever, okay? Here are the two things I like to use. The shorty brush because basically that's what I use for everything. You want something that's really gonna press in. You want it to press in hard. You're not doing this to like paint it. You're pressing in so that this goes through the fabric onto your piece and really adheres it, all right? And then I also have one of these Bondo squeegees, okay? You can get these uh, at the hardware store or like a paint spreader or a trowel or something like that, but this is bendy so I can push out any air bubbles that happen, okay? All right, so get some of this on here. And as you go in, start from the corner and we're pressing down. Pretty hard. And you really wanna make sure you get your edges. So I'm gonna take this off because that's pulling it up right now and I don't want it to do that, okay? It's gonna be a little bit milky a little bit white, it'll dry clear. Don't worry about that. I say don't worry a lot. Because <laughs> I know some of you worry. We all worry, we all stress. Um, it's okay. If it didn't scare us a little bit, it wouldn't be worth doing. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do each drawer and then let it dry what's gonna happen is it's gonna stiffen the fabric, okay? That's why I'm not cutting off the edges yet because once we put this on and it stiffens the fabric, we're gonna be able to just cut it with a razor blade instead of scissors. So we're gonna be able to just go It's very satisfying and we'll get a perfect edge. So if you have a corner that keeps coming up and doesn't want to stay, just put, just pull it back, put a little bit more of your spray tack, wait a second, and then press it down. Now, we're going to let her dry, and then we're going to come back. We're going to do it maybe one or two more times. I like to be really safe. i got to tell you, the pieces I've done have lasted so long without any nicks, without any scratches, without any tearing, because I took the extra time to do a couple more layers of the Mod Podge and the Poly on top. A, the fabric is already stronger than paper, okay? So that works really well, especially because I sell a lot of my work and I want it to last. 
Um, but B, because I put so many layers through the fabric to adhere it, it's just like rock solid. All right, she's all dry. We're ready for the moment of truth. We are going to use just a razor blade, whatever you have, an X-Acto knife, a razor blade, anything you have, make sure it's sharp, sharp, sharp. And we're gonna go in here, we're gonna use the edge of our drawer and we're gonna cut away everything else. This is the most exciting part because now we're really gonna see how our design looks. Or if we totally screwed it up. Ah, no, we didn't. We didn't, you didn't. Basically, find your groove here where your drawer edge is. See that? Right in there, let me get you a little closer. Okay. Take any kind of razor blade or X-Acto knife and get right into it and kind of pop through. Did you hear that? Kind of sounds like you're farting. Okay, no worries. And then start to drag it. So we've got it there and now I'm pressing in and I'm basically dragging it. And I want to make sure that I keep my, as much as I can, keep a steady pressure. So you keep your cutting device in this groove. There we are, I can feel it. Okay, so, and now watch. Look at that, see? You're gonna have a perfect line. Look how awesome that is. So you can pull that off there. All right, see how clean that is? It's just pulling, 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 pulling. There we go. Oh, this is, this is the fun part. It's really working. Even if you don't get it perfect here, don't worry about it. I have another trick to help you smooth out some of these edges. Sometimes the vertical is harder than the horizontal to get even, but we'll fix that. You may not want to take this band off. You may want to have, keep it on there. So you have the option. For me, I want to have a frame of color around everything and have this be a pattern in the background. But if you really want to just have everything covered, this is a perfect medium for that because you can see you can keep it right here on all these little nooks and crannies. Heck, you probably could have even wrapped the whole piece if you wanted to because you can stretch it to go over corners. Um, so that's not an option I'm doing, but it's an option you can do. We came to party all night long. Let's sing along to it. All right, so once you've cut the sides here, you might have a little bit of an overhang, just if you didn't get it quite on, or you might even have a few little frayed edges like down here. So the easiest way to get rid of those is actually to just use a sanding block, all right? Medium grit. Medium grit's just fine. And what I want you to do is just push it back away from you. So this will get all the little pieces cleaned up. So sometimes these sanding blocks get dull or you can't get them rough enough. And so what I do is just use scraps of sandpaper that I have around the store, just like this one that I can't use anymore on the sanding disc, but I'll just wrap it right around here. And then go like this. So I'm going against the piece. I don't want to go this way. All right. I don't want to pull it. I don't want to pull it toward me because I might risk pulling up the fabric. So I'm going to go away from me. Down. All right, so at this stage of the game, we have gone over and made sure we have no pieces of string hanging off. We've sanded all the edges. We've made sure that everything is down and adhered very, very well. Now, here's what we gotta do next. One more layer, okay? Just one more, because as I said, we've got it to stick down, and we've got it to stick down some more by putting the Mod Podge, but I gotta tell you, there's one last step I like to do. And that's just putting on either a matte or a satin polyurethane. 
It's just one more layer of added protection. You could probably get away with just the Mod Podge and calling it a day, but I like to have one more thing on here so that if, I mean, if someone's at your party and they've got a glass of red wine and they just like trip over and they're like, like if this has poly on it, you're going to be like, let me just wipe that off, honey. Don't worry about it. But with just Mod Podge on, mm, not so much. All right. So let's just, we've worked so hard. I mean, you've worked so hard. Let's just give it one more coat. Seal that sucker in. Okay. You with me? But now we need to put on all the paint. Put on the layers. Bring this baby to life. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we want to. Picking up our love friends for love. Because we wanna, we wanna Yeah, we just wanna have fun The trunk's full of wine We're gonna stay up Have the time of our lives The night is in young Don't need anybody else We're about there. Just a couple more steps left. I'm gonna leave that to you. Basically, we need to seal the whole piece. So, you guys have watched a lot of these videos and you may have your own way of sealing that works best for you. I personally love using clear wax. I use all different brands. So use what you like. You can use a polyurethane, you can use wax, you can use Big Top, you can use any product that works for you that you're used to using. Put it over the whole thing. It's all good. And then lastly, hardware. You gotta put the hardware back on. So let me just show you real quick what you're gonna need to do. Well, first we need to decide, are we gonna use that hardware? Mine was French Provincial and this piece doesn't really look French Provincial anymore. And I want something that won't compete. So actually I've decided to switch my hardware and I'm gonna go with glass, all right? So I got these right online, super easy. But yes, there are two holes here. Well, the beauty of this is I can just pick one. So I'm gonna pick the center and not the wide. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So right now we have these two holes where the French Provincial hardware would go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug one of them up with wood filler and use the other one. The only thing we have to make sure of here is that we're using the same one all the way through, okay? That's all I'm gonna do. Don't try to poke it through the front and don't try to poke it through the back. You'll just push all that fabric off. You'll push off all that hard work. So here's what I want you to do. Find where the hole is, okay? Put your finger on it and then push it down a little bit and you're gonna see a dent, a little bit of a dent. And then take your drill. Not too big. You just need to make a little bit of an opening right where that dent is. Okay, and drill right through. There you go. Now you have a hole. Now you can, and now you can take your hardware and put it right through. I learned this the hard way. I learned everything the hard way for you guys, okay? Now you can push it right through. Put your hardware on. Look at that. It's perfect. It's perfect because this is not going to compete with this. All right. I got the ones with the bubbles inside. Sometimes I get the clear ones. Go with whatever works for you. But I thought the ones with the bubbles would look kind of fun with this pattern. But again, not compete with everything that we've just done. Or you can put your other hardware right back on or you can paint it. The choice is yours. But just because you have two holes because you have that kind of hardware doesn't mean you have to stick with that. And it also doesn't mean you have to drill new ones. Just use one like I did. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do the rest. Wait. Thanks so much, you guys. Tanglewood Sue, over and out. We made it. I made it. You made it. Did you make it? Have you made it yet? So I'm all done just getting her staged for some photography so that you guys can see how awesome this turned out and be inspired to make one for yourself. So I just wanna thank you guys for watching today. It's been a thrill and an honor to be here with you today and to teach you some tips and tricks and basically just to share my passion for all things creative, 
for color, for upcycling, for reuse, for all of it. I really appreciate you watching this show. I hope it's inspired you. I hope you go out there and you grab some fabric and you grab some paint and you find that piece off the side of the road and you just make it you. Just make it all you because that's going to make it awesome.